doing on this Saturday. So, so thrilled, so thrilled to be here. As always, my name is Angela Petrilli, here with the awesome folks at Fishman for another Fishman Takeover. That's right, folks, doing my riff rundown today. Have your acoustic guitars ready and standard tuning. Today we are learning Led Zeppelin's Thank You, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite songs from Led Zeppelin II. We're going to be learning it today. Again, standard tuning, it's going to be a lot of fun. So here's what we're in for. We're going to be going over each of the three parts over the hour. So here we go. That's what we're going to be going over today, folks. Thank you. by Led Zeppelin. You guys know the drill. With these lessons, I go nice and slow. We take it step by step, talk you through good techniques, how you want to play the chords, things you want to think about when you're, you know, creating your choreography for, for everything. So again, nice and slow here. You guys know the drill. Let me know where you're tuning in from and your funniest concert experience, whether you were on stage playing or a funny thing you saw happen at a concert or a really cool a really cool thing you saw at a concert. So that is what I'm asking today. So in the comments, and I'm gonna read through a couple of them too. And also how these go, this is also a live Q&A. So if you guys have questions about stuff, I'm gonna leave plenty of time to answer your questions about the gear I'm using and techniques and all of that good stuff. So let's go ahead and get started here. So what's happening here is that stunningly beautiful intro jimmy page jimmy page man just one of the best one of the best one of one of my guitar heroes hands down for sure i just love how he plays so i'm gonna play just the intro part a few times at varying speeds and we're gonna talk through how we do it Slow. I'll play it even slower. Okay, so what's happening here? Well, we've got a D chord. We've got this really cool, what could we call it? Call it a C add nine, sure. And then we add a really cool F sharp in there. I'll be talking about that in a little bit. And then it's G over B. Again, with this theme that is continuing through the. 
and then we move the bass around. So that's what's happening there. So let's go ahead and talk about the D chord first. So I want to talk about this, the right hand. Keep it nice and light when you're playing this. If you notice at the top, see how I'm brushing everything? I'm not going. That's not how it goes. Nice and light with the right hand when you are strumming this nice and light, let the pick do the work for you. Use the arm to give it that power, right? But allow the pick to just brush across the strings. That's what we want here. I don't wanna hear the peaks and valleys, right? Those spaces in between the strings. We don't want that, we don't want that. It's not gonna sound good, nice and light. So we've got the D chord here. Now we're gonna to go to our D sus4. How do we play this? Go ahead and play your regular D chord for my beginners out there. First finger, second fret G string. Okay, it's your A. Your third finger is hitting the D note, third fret B string, B as in boy. Your second finger is hitting the F sharp, second fret E string. Okay, so that's your D. Put the pinky down on the third fret of that E string, that's your G. That's what makes that D chord a D suspended four, okay? Just like that. Beautiful chord. Love a good sus chord. Play that sus chord, release the pinky finger again, playing the D chord, okay? So like this. Okay, so let's do that again nice and slow. Now what you're gonna do next is lift up your middle finger. When we lift up the middle finger when we're playing a D chord, now it becomes a D sus two, okay? Because that E note is open. So if we play that chord, really nice open chord, Jimmy Page uses these all the time. They're awesome. I'm a huge fan of sus chords. Those of you who've been watching these lessons for the last, gosh, 20 weeks or so, just is crazy. You, you guys know I'm a fan of those chords. They're quite beautiful. So use them any chance you get, they're great. So let's go ahead and play this nice and slow, okay? From D, D sus four, D sus two. Now we're gonna play the D again, okay? So just like that. One more time. So, what happens after this? Not too bad, right? We're just moving the pinky finger and that middle finger for the most part. Your first finger and your third finger are staying stationary. Why lift them up? You don't need to. Don't expel that unnecessary energy. You don't need to do it. Okay, so keep them there, keep them there. They're your foundational parts of these chords, okay? So now what we wanna do next is you're gonna lift up your middle finger, D sus two chord, those of you paying attention, lift that up, then bring it right back down to play the, your regular old D chord, D, F sharp, and A. Okay? So just like that, I'm gonna do it nice and slow. Let's do it a few more times. One more time, here we go. I'm gonna bring up the speed a little. That's our main riff, okay? That's playing through each of these three chords. That, that's it. Now what we're gonna do here, you're gonna go ahead, bring your second finger up right there to the third fret of the A string, that's your C, okay? So that's gonna come next. So just like this, nice and slow. And you're just gonna hit it, just like that. We want that bass change to be very prominent in this, okay? Because we have that bass walk up, it's or walk down, it's really beautiful. So D, C, and B. 
that's what's happening in the bass while we play these while we play these riffs and you'll hear it you'll hear it in a bit it's a lot of fun so here we go nice and slow doing that d riff with our d sus4 d sus2 and d major then going to that c note there on the third fret of the a string okay take your time nice and slow here folks like that. Let's do that one more time. We'll get to the next riff. And notice how I'm strumming this nice and light. I'm not picking out the notes. I'm not picking out the notes by each string. I'm keeping it nice and light with the pick. Okay, so keep that in mind. So now what happens here is we get to this. So how are we going to continue to play the riff? Well, the fingers are going to change. We're gonna still play the same exact riff, just other fingers are gonna do the job, okay? So we've got this. We're gonna strum that C add nine right there, okay? So here's how we play that chord. Your second finger, keep it on that C note, A string, third fret. Your third finger, place that third fret B string, B as in boy, that's D, okay? Your pinky finger, go ahead and place that third fret of the E string, that's G. So when we play that chord, it's really beautiful. Okay, so I guess you can call it a C add nine without the, the third. We don't have that E there, okay? So let's go ahead and do that nice and slow. first part of our riff right there. So now what happens here, lift up your pinky finger, put your first finger down second fret E string, that's the F sharp, okay, so like this. It's gonna be an upstroke, folks, okay? So let's do that from the top, just like that. And it's a good exercise for that pinky. I know there's a lot of us out there who, di who don't like to use the pinky too much when they play. This is a good song to really exercise it, okay? It's a good thing. Using your pinky when you play guitar is <laughs> it's an important part of being a good guitar player, all right? So don't be afraid to use the pinky finger when you're playing. All right, so here we go. From the top, giving you a little context, the D chord into our C add nine. Right, see how it's coming together? So now what I want you to do, lift up that first finger and strum that. Hear the riff coming together here. And it's gonna be a downstroke, okay? So like this. Keep the strumming continuous, all right? I know it feels a little bit like that when we, we're doing, at least when we're beginners and we're doing this kind of stuff, but the more you, the more you stick with it, the easier it gets, I promise. So, after that, put the first finger right back down. Lift it up and then put it back down. First finger on that F sharp second fret E string, okay? So, let's do the whole thing in context again. Such a joy to have you guys here today. My name is Angela Petrilli. You guys are having fun. Be sure to subscribe to Fishman on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. You could follow me, AngelaPetrilliMusic.com. You can follow me on YouTube too. All the info's there. So from the top, here's what we have so far. Let's do that a few times. I'm gonna play it slow a couple times, gonna play it a little bit faster, all right? So stick with it, folks, you can do it. All right, let's do that again. The 
switch takes a little getting used to, but again, the more you do it, the better you're gonna be. Keep in mind, really good technique here. This is a theme that goes through all of these, these Fishman takeover lessons that I do. Make sure the technique is great, because with good technique, speed will be there, clarity will be there. Really take the time to have good technique. Really take the time, it's so worth it, so, so worth it. Again, from the top, I'm gonna speed it up just a little. So now we're gonna go to this G over B. So how do we get there from the C add nine that we've been playing? No problem, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So that's what we've been doing. You're gonna hammer on first finger, second fret of the A string, that's your B. So hit that A string and then hammer on second fret of that A string on your B note, okay? So let's just work on that move there because it's really cool to do a hammer on. now. Do you have to know? Sometimes Jimmy Page will do it and sometimes he won't. Again, but I want you to I want you to know how to do all these little intricacies. They're a lot of fun. So from the C add nine riff. Hammer on with that first finger. Let's do that again. Notice how the third finger is staying there. We're going to need it. You know, I talk about in these lessons with our pivot points, that's one of them right there. Leave the third finger where it is. We're gonna need it in a second, okay? Notice how my third finger has yet to move in these lessons, and they're released in the song. It's yet to move. It's yet to move. So keep that in mind. Keep it there. It is your pivot point again. like that, keeping that third finger where it is. Now, your pinky finger, go ahead and put that down, third fret, E, G note, okay? And we're gonna do that same riff again, but this time, and this one's probably the trickiest of the three. We really wanna make sure with that second finger, that's gonna be hitting the F sharp, second fret of the E string, okay? So you really wanna make sure you're right on it. Also something too to keep in mind, and this is just you know housekeeping type stuff when you're playing. Keep your fingernails trimmed, because if they're a little long and the fingernail hits the fretboard first, it can be slightly uncomfortable and you kind of hit. I know sometimes when I've forgotten to trim my nails, the string can go underneath the fingernail, which feels awful. So keep your, <laughs> keep your nails trimmed when you do this kind of stuff, particularly when it's a really, intricate tight spot like that on a very thin string, keeping those nails nice and, and manicured. It's always a good thing, okay? So, again. Do some nice light strumming there. Notice how the third finger stayed there. Pinky went ahead and went to that third fret E string, G note, okay? Let's go ahead and do that a few times. Second finger, F sharp, okay? Keep it there. Lift that second finger, playing the E string open, and then put that second finger back down on that F sharp. And then lift it up and put it back down again. Just like that, okay? So I'm gonna do that bit. I'm just gonna isolate that so you guys can hear that. I'm gonna do it nice and slow and then gradually build up the speed, okay? So 
from okay again let's play the right chord there we go really good exercise for these fingers. It's a very basic chord progression, G, C, and, or D, C, and G, basically. But again, these intricacies of this riff streaming through all three chords with changing fingers each time. Think about the technique here. Think good technique, all right? So from that C again, we'll do it a few more times. this is something you can do is go ahead and hammer on with your pinky finger on the third fret of that E string and then release and pull off that's something I like to do when I play this I know I've heard Jimmy Page do it a few times too it's a really beautiful little part that you can add in so let's go ahead from the C going to our G over B with that added lick, okay? And then go back to D. And then a D sus four. Again, notice how light I am strumming the guitar. We don't we're not, we're not playing Heartbreaker here. We're not playing Babe, I'm gonna leave you. It's a very, very light touch with the acoustic, at least for this part of the song. In the bridge and in some of those verses, we can get a little heavier, but for this intro, nice light pick work here, okay? Light stuff. So again, from the top, I'm gonna combine all of these parts. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take some time to read about some of, uh, some of your favorite funny concert moments. And for those of you tuning in, let us know your funniest concert moment and let us know where you're tuning in from. So, here we go from the top. D sus four to D, now repeat. time slow here it is a little more speed That's what's happening there in the intro. If there's any bit of advice that I can give you, take your time. Go nice and slow, I promise. Go nice and slow. It's gonna make the technique, it's gonna make the song sound so much better. Take your time, take your time. All right, so let's see. We got some folks from Quebec. Thank you for being here. Awesome, we got England in the house. We have Alberta, Canada. Beautiful, beautiful part of Canada. Love Alberta, it's great. Looks like we got some Atlanta folks here in the house. Thanks for tuning in. I love it, guys. Thank you so much. We got Portugal here, Colorado, Phoenix, Los Angeles, Toronto. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Ah, oh, this is so, so cool. Let's see. What are some funny, let's, let's, before we get to the rest of the lesson here, let's hear some folks' funny 
concert, uh, <laughs> concert stories. I've seen a few here. These are great. Um, how to pull a drunk guy off the stage by his belt. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, always a good thing. Got to keep people safe. Um, let's see. Oh, this is great. Uh, I was backstage at a Tina Turner concert, and as a gift, she received a life-size chocolate leg. Look at that. Love that. Very funny. I've got some folks from Vancouver Island in the beautiful part of Canada. Thank you for being here. That's great. Oh, these are funny guys. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for sending these. These are really good. Again, those of you tuning in, if you got any funny concert stories, uh, please let us know. These are great. <laughs> oh, this is oh how funny. Grateful Dead eighty nine climbed into the arena via a hundred. No way. Oh, a, a fence. Okay, got to the top. The fence was not attached. I almost fell, um, and that is hilarious. I looked up. <laughs> That's great. Glad you're okay, Dan. Glad the fall didn't kill you. That's lovely. <laughs> Good stuff, guys. Again, keep uh, keep writing keep writing your funny stories. Would love to would love to share a few with everyone. That's great. Thanks for sharing, everybody. Good stuff. So when we get to the chorus of the song, so we just did the intro. The chorus is going to be the same chords. Yes. Right. Good stuff. Basic chords here: D, C, and G. That's it. So, if we're playing it, so the part, if the sun refused to shine, right there is where these, com these chords come in. So just like that, pretty simple I, I, for, for my beginners. Let me talk to you for a second here. What I want you to do, keep those fingers nice and curled like bridges. That's how you're gonna get a really good, clear, efficient sound. Playing those chords, okay? Get as close to that fret as you can without touching it, all right? And I know sometimes this, the, particularly on the D chord, that third finger can be a little finicky and not wanna move and be a bit stubborn, but trust me, it will. Just keep practicing the chord, it will. And then you go ahead to your C chord. Again, notice the lightness of my strumming hand. I'm letting the pick do the work for me. So I'm gonna stop with the commentary. I just want you to hear how light I'm playing with the pick. the difference if I'm a little more aggressive. Get some buzziness. We don't want that. Nice and light. This is a love song. This is, in my opinion, one of the best love songs ever written. Be gentle with this when you are playing it. Let these chords, right, let the sustain of these chords really ring through. We want to be very tasteful with these chords. Yes, are they simple chords? Absolutely. They're very easy chords to play. But again, nice and light, nice and light. So here's what we're gonna do next. For perhaps my folks are a little bit more in intermediate level. What we could do here when we are playing these chords is again, perhaps add some suspensions into these chords to, to just, you know, maybe make it move a little bit more. So this is what I mean. do that again. See I'm taking apart some of those chords. Lifting up fingers that are already within the chord itself. Doing some really beautiful suspension. So that there, what you can do, leading into that D chord, go ahead and lift up that, that first finger and then hammer it on to the second fret of that G string. Isn't that beautiful? So this is something you can add on to that chord if you feel like ah, the D chord is maybe a little too simple.
go ahead and add these suspensions. They're quite beautiful. See what I mean? Just gives a little movement, a little melodic movement. Now when we get to that C chord, notice what I did there. Doing a C suspended two, okay? What are the notes that we're playing there? Well, we have our third finger on the third fret of the A string. Say that 10 times fast. We're live, folks. This is all, this is all live, no edits here. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, there's your C, third fret A string. Leave the D string open. That's gonna be our suspended two, okay? Your G string is going to be left open. Your first finger place that on the first fret of the B string, that's C, because remember, B and C are a half step apart in terms of us guitar players, one fret, okay? So B open, C, first fret. So when we play that, can you go ahead and leave that E string open as well? Because that's the third note in our C chord. Okay, what we want to do here is then we strum, hammer on with that second finger completing that C chord, okay, with that, we're hitting the E note there. So we're letting the D string be open and then hit on that E, okay, at the second fret. So again, using that first finger to hammer on there at the second fret of that G string, we're gonna sit with this. Now to our C, sus2, to C, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna do this a few times out of the commentary, so here we go. And then just go to your G chord from there. Keeping that third finger where it is, switch to your D chord again. Pivot finger here. Why lift it up when you're just gonna put it right back in the same spot, people? Leave it there. It's gonna make your switching a lot easier, I promise. Here we go. Again, to move that D chord around. Want to make it a D sus two? Great. Want to make it a D sus four? Awesome. Then go into your next line. See again how it builds that movement? It's really, really cool. So here's what I mean. I'll play it slow and then I'll play it fast. So there it is there. So these are, again, I'm giving you options of beautiful melody to fill, to fill the space. But again, be very gentle when you're strumming this song. Don't, don't play this too aggressive. Nice, good, gentle playing, good strumming. Keep it moving too. We don't want the strumming too erratic, you know. We don't want that nice, like cutting. Yes, Bill Applegate. Yes, like cutting through clouds. Exactly what we want, like cutting through clouds. Just like that, all right? So now we're gonna go ahead and go on to this, could we call it the bridge? Sure. What we've got here is D, or B minor to E major and A. Those are our three chords there, okay? So if we are coming from the chorus, right? And we're playing D, C, and G. Adding the suspensions if we want, awesome. Then to our D chord. What I like to do when I'm playing this song is I like to play that D sus four. Play a quick D chord right before it and then right into the B minor. I'm gonna go ahead and play that so you know what I mean and we'll, we'll break it down. 
So, from the last line of the chorus. really lends very beautifully that G F sharp note that's happening then right into that B minor chord I find it quite beautiful so I encourage you guys try it out try it out now when it comes to building our bar chords I am I I, I like Build the bar first because again that relationship between that first finger and thumb are super important so you really want to get that stabilized before you go ahead and put the little chord inside of that bar so really make sure again with bar chords you don't want your thumb all the way up here I mean it's impossible for me to even do a bar chord if I have my thumb all the way up here see how crooked and squished the fingers are we don't want that we want a nice strong clamp I tell my my students my my one-on-one -on -one Skype students, I tell them like a crab or like a lobster, that grip, or even, you know, like a capo, okay? Really good solid grip. Have that thumb at the middle of the neck. Okay, so it's gonna be pointed towards this tuner. Okay? So like that. Your thumb's not gonna be like totally straight. Don't want that. We want it again, just right there. Okay? Back of the neck clamping solidly with that first finger on that really really good relationship with those two fingers that is going to make your bar chords incredibly successful okay so that's what i want you shooting for and again take your time nice and slow nice and slow okay so we've got our d sus4 to d and see how my thumb immediately moves to the middle of the neck that's what i want yours to do too place that first finger bar our root of the b minor obviously is going to be B right here. Second fret A string right there. <laughs> okay. Get as close to that fret as you can without touching it. Place the rest of the bar there. Then go ahead. Second finger, third fret B string. That's your D note. Your third finger, go ahead. And again, bridges. Nice, good roundness. See what I mean there? Nice curved fingers. That's what we want. Place your third finger on the fourth fret of that D string, that's your F sharp, and your pinky finger is gonna curl right underneath it. See that, right there, on the fourth fret of the G string, that's B, okay? And that's what you want. You're obviously hitting this F sharp here too on that second fret of the E string. Okay, so that's how we build our B minor. Again, from the, from the D sus4 to D to that B minor, let's do that switch a couple times here. Get the blood flowing in those hands. Now, you can choose to be really cool and percussive when you strum this part. You can choose to play it straight too. So, I'm gonna give you guys both options here. The next chord we are going to play after this B minor is gonna be our E major. I think a lot of us who are here know how to play this chord, I'm not gonna go into it, and then A. I am a fan when I play my A chord, most times, most times, to not use my first finger. It's a second, third, and fourth finger kind of grip on the second fret of the D, G, and B string respectively, okay? And make sure they are curled because we want to hear that E too because that is the fifth of our A chord, a very important note in that chord, okay? So just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and play through that. I'm going to play one version a little straighter, and then I'm going to play one version with a little more movement okay so here's the straight nice easy strumming i'll do that a little slower this time now again notice how nice and light and congruent those strums are Okay, so that's what we want to shoot for there for this version. So here we go. Do it a little slower this time. So yeah, one more time for good luck. Now, 
we want to give it a little more oomph, we hear this in other versions that they have played as well. Kind of goes like this. That way too. They're both kind of cool. I know when I play it live, I'll, I'll mix it up. I'll do maybe one, one bridge that way, another version, you know, another bridge the other way. So again, just brings a little bit of rhythmic interest to these really beautiful chords. Again, I'll do that same speed and then go a little bit slower. Again, I'm seeing all these comments here. I am so thrilled you guys are enjoying this lesson today. This is one of my favorite songs to play and I'm thrilled you guys are enjoying it as well. So again, thank you so, so much. And you know, if you guys are, are having fun, uh, be sure to subscribe to all, all the awesome stuff that Fisherman is doing online. They came out with some killer P90s this week. So those of you looking for some new pickups, be sure, be sure to check those out. They're, um, they're pretty rocking. Really, really excited about those. They're very cool. And uh, you can follow me, Angel Patrulli Music, on YouTube and Instagram and Twitter and all that good stuff. And AngelPatrulliMusic.com. You can go and find me there. All that good stuff. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do here is we're going to go through this bridge part again with a different variation of the strumming, and then I see some questions about this guitar and the stuff I'm going through, so I'm going to talk about that too. So here we go. There's a bit of palm mutant happening here. See what I mean there? I'll do it again a little slower. Let's do that one more time. just like that. So again, notice how the strumming is light, light, light. It sounds a bit more aggressive. I'm putting just a little bit more energy into those strums, but again, I'm letting the pick do the work for me. So I've got a bunch of people asking, okay, uh, guitar that I'm playing through today. This is my beloved triple O 17 E in black smoke. This is, this is a stunning Martin guitar. I love this thing. I've had it a few years. It's a 2017. I know I've been getting comments too about how old this is. It's either a 2016 or a 2017. I forget. But it is absolutely fun to play. I love this thing. I've got the Fishman Matrix BT Enhance in here and absolutely love, love, love the pickups. Sounds really good. And what I am going through as far as a pedal DI, goodness, I am using the Fishman Aura Spectrum DI. This is a pedal I bring to all of my acoustic gigs without fail. It is, it has made playing acoustic live such a dream and so much easier. I don't have to worry about feedback. I don't have to worry about my guitar sounding funny. It allows your instrument to sound as it should, which is just a gif when you're playing live. And I mean, when we buy our acoustic guitars, we buy them because they sound great acoustic. So what the R Spectrum does is it really allows the instrument to, si to shine as it should. It's a really awesome piece of equipment. I love it. I've, I've probably played thousands of gigs with that thing and have never had a problem with it ever. It's just, it's the best and they look cool too. You know, they're great, they're great. So I love them, that's what I use. I am also using the Fishman Loudbox Performer amp here today. That is getting mic'd up with, you know, your trusty Shure SM57 and then out to all of you fine folks. So that's, that is my acoustic rig. This is, this is the rig I use when I play acoustic shows. It is this whole triumvirate of Fishman awesome gear. So, so yeah, be sure to go ahead and yeah, check that out and listen, listen to what these, these things can do as far as pickups, the Imager DI, the, the, the amp. It's just really, really great stuff. And again, I'm, I'm just so 
so thrilled to be able to use it. It's great stuff. It's always good when you get good gear. It's always great. Um, so let's see. We've got Authentic Relic 2. Yes, yeah, someone said, yeah, I did that myself. <laughs> That is a relic I did myself. Those of you who watch my videos on Instagram and, you know, others on YouTube can probably see that I can be an aggressive strummer. But yeah, this has, uh, that was all me. That was all me. I've got some stuff happening here. I've got some stuff happening on the back. This thing's been dropped a few times. Still sounds awesome. Uh, yeah, this is the one I bring on the road uh, the most. And yeah, I just absolutely, absolutely love this Martin. It's a real special one to me, real special one to me. So I always love to feature it uh, for these fishermen takeovers. So yeah, it's really, really good stuff, really good stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the verse. So what happens in the verse here is we go to C, to G, to D. Now again, super easy, simple chords. He throws in a D sus4 in there too. What I want to say is this. Be mindful of the moves, be mindful of the choreography. Could you do a G chord like this? I know there's a lot of folks out there that play it this way. Totally cool, totally fine. Um, I like to play the version with the D note. I think it has a little more oomph a lot of times, but again, if I'm playing more country-based stuff, sometimes I'll go and reach for that version of the G chord. So whatever floats your boat, whatever works for you, go ahead and do it. So there's something else I do want to mention with that bridge. Now, I know I've done lessons for a while where we've talked about, okay, like, are there some cool inversions that we can include in these songs? Absolutely. You can also grip your E major, and it's something I did at the top of the hour today. So you have your D or your B minor here, okay? Think about this move. And for perhaps my intermediates, my folks are slightly more advanced, Try this. So in that bridge, we had that B minor E, right? B minor again. E and A. So we had all that happening. Here's the thing. Sometimes we can go ahead and grip our E chord like this. Or like this. That was an E flat into our E major, there we go. So, here's how we would do this. Play your regular E at the second, third, at third, first, second frets. It's a really cool new voicing that we can include with this E chord. So, Yes, folks are asking if we are in standard tuning. The answer is yes, we are in standard tuning here. So we're coming from this B minor to E. This really cool shaped E. Okay, and this is the shape. Do I wanna talk about that? Sure. This is the shape that we see in Under the Bridge, but we see it up here. That'll be another lesson for another day. But um, it's that same shape. We just bring it up a whole step to make an E chord instead of a, a D chord. So how do we get there from B minor? Here's how we do it. B minor bar chord. What I want you to do, the third finger is going to lead us to this voicing, okay? And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna bring that third finger, slide it slowly to that G sharp located on the sixth fret of the D string. And if you need to do a quick octave check, you can go ahead and do that too, okay? So that's your G sharp. That's our third in our E major chord, okay? So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and reach with your pinky. Your pinky is going to hit the E root located on the seventh fret of the A string. So right there you have your one and you have your three right there. So now what you're gonna do your first finger, go ahead and place that on the B note. This is located fourth fret G string. 
Now your third finger, place that on the E fifth fret B string like that. So if we play those four notes, and if you wanna play an open E string, do it. If you wanna play all six, you can do it. Nice big open E major, okay? Looks scary, but is doable. So here's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna play this nice and slowly a few times, choreographing this move slowly so you can see how I build it, placing one finger down at a time. And a move like this, again, you really want to take your time here. Go slow, okay? So B minor. Sliding that third finger, sixth fret, pinky goes down. First finger goes down, third, or second. Okay, let's do that again. Let's do that a few more times. This is an interesting grip, right? So really, if you're feeling pressure in the hand, you're getting cramping, Walk away for a little bit. I don't want you playing in pain or anything. Then go ahead and come back, okay? So let's go ahead and do that B minor to E major. Nice, slow. So here we go. Letting that third finger lead play the rest of the chord. Let's do that a few more times. Again. Okay. So now let's go ahead and add that A chord after this. So again, we're playing that E chord one time. We're just strumming it once and then getting onto our A chord. Again, is it a lot of effort to go ahead and do that? Is this an elevated level of that E chord? Yes, but you know, we're here to grow. So I encourage you, try it. Incorporate it in your playing, why not? Then switch back over to that A chord. Let's go ahead and do that again. One more time, let's do it. Okay, so just like that. Now what I'm gonna do here, since we've gotten to all the way to that part, I'm gonna go ahead and play through the whole thing again. And again, those of you who have questions, I'm gonna get to as many as I can. Again, my name is Angela Petrilli, here doing my Saturday Fishman takeover riff rundown lesson, teaching you guys how to play Thank You by Led Zeppelin. Here we go from the top. Level two with a suspended chords. Here we go. Intro 
again. Pretty cool, right? So, so that, for the most part, is the tune here. We go back and forth. There is a really cool solo, but I'm gonna save that for another lesson. So keep an eye out for that. I love the solo in this, but didn't want to cram both into one big lesson, so I figured I'll split it up. So keep an eye out. Again, be sure to go ahead and, and subscribe to Fishman and myself on the YouTubes and Twitters and Facebooks and all that good stuff to keep an eye. Make sure you get alerts on all this, all the good stuff that is happening. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna answer a few of these questions here. Okay. Um, all right. So yeah, you do wanna keep the fingers nice and curled when you're going to play these, your D, C, and G chords. Again, putting the right amount of pressure, I don't want you to hurt your hands too much but just once you get a nice clear ring, you are good to go. The more you play, the more you start to notice, okay, I can let up just a little bit and still get good tone out of the guitar. So pay, pay attention, particularly, you know, how you're feeling. Again, I don't want you playing in pain. It's not fun for anybody. It's not fun for anybody. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. So, and again, if there's, there's one big thing, and I always like to mention this towards the end of the lesson. There's really one big thing I want you to take away from this lesson today is a nice, light strumming hand. Letting the pick do the work for you. As I have mentioned before, this is the most inexpensive amplifier that you can buy. So use it. Get the muscle and the power from your upper arm, right? And as you notice here, see how I'm swinging when I strum? I'm not using my wrist. Me personally, I don't really like to use my wrist a lot when I strum. I like to have big, broad strokes with nice, big sustain. And with a guitar like this, you can really get away with those nice, big sounds, okay? So when I strum, and that's why I have it, you know, naturally relicked right here. Notice how the arm, I'm not moving straight right? I'm letting the arm move naturally. And that's why I have those marks there. It's because when I strum, notice it's right there. Okay. So allow the arm to move naturally, be strong in the way that you are strumming. Okay. And again, don't be too, if you are too tense, you're going to hear it. So be nice and light. I like to have my hand open just a little bit. This works for me. If you find it doesn't work for you, totally okay. But that's what works for me is I like to keep the hand open, letting the air run through the fingers, okay? I think it, and it allows you to relax a little bit more so you're not as tense when you're playing, okay? So let's see, Brody's asking, Angela, how long did it take you to learn this song yourself? Great question, Brody, thank you so much. Um, it's, I learned it years and years ago, so I can't, I can't really remember exactly how long it took me to learn it, but I, really took my time. I really, I played this intro slow for a very long time to make sure that I was playing all of those notes very clear and strumming too, very lightly so that I can hear these notes as I was picking them out. And just being sure that my fingers were curled properly, I was hitting the right part of the fretboard when I was doing this, not, you know, hitting a, hitting a fret and having it buzz. So I really encourage you guys play this part slow, painfully slow. That's how, that's how the pros, that's how we, that's how we learn songs well is to really take your time here, really look and engage in what you're doing. So, I mean, if it takes going that slow, to get the technique perfect, I highly encourage you to do it. Highly encourage you to do it because you're just gonna get better results. And with good technique, speed is gonna come later. Don't worry about that. Practicing slow is the only way that you're gonna be able to play something fast and to tempo. So go slow. Go slow when you're doing this. Go 
go slow. You're worth the effort. Your playing is worth the effort. I promise, I promise. So, so go slow with that. Yes, Brody, you're, you're absolutely, you're absolutely welcome. Um, John is saying, does having large fingers and hands, does that help a lot? You know, it's, it's funny. Some people say, oh, my hands are too big. I can't play. Or, oh my gosh, my hands are too small. I can't play. You can, you can still play. It's not going to be a hindrance to anything. I think when you have larger hands, I think sometimes some of those large grips, particularly in say a chord like this, that E that we played may come a little bit easier to you. Again, practicing your rudiments, exercises like the spider, really, really help in getting those stretches. Really good, nice and clear. That's what we want at the end of the day. We want good, clear, good, good, clear playing. Say that 10 times fast. Um, again, thank you all so much. It is always such an honor, truly, 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 to, to sit here with you guys every week and, and teach you guys how to play some of my favorite songs. Truly an honor for me. I'm so thrilled to get, you know, comments from you guys saying that these really help you a lot. So I really, really... I'm, I'm, I'm glad these are, these are helping you a lot. So again, my name is Angela Petrilli here with the awesome folks at Fishman wrapping up another edition of the Riff Rundown. Next week's is going to be acoustic, so have it ready. We'll be in standard tuning too. I already know which song I'm going to do. It's another classic rock tune. I will say this, Eric Clapton played on it, and that's all I'm going to say. So you have to wait till next week to figure out what it is. Again, thank you all so much. If you guys had a blast be sure to subscribe to the Fishman channels, to my channels. Go and play a lot of music. Let's put some good energy out there in the world. Play some music today. And folks, again, such an honor to be able to sit here and teach you all today. So take care. Have a wonderful week. I will see you next time. Take care. <laughs>